sectioning out like the top of the head here, or the top of the hair and then the, the bottom, working off of like using my comb here to see where it rounds off of the head. All right. So kind of using that as my guide to like for the what goes on the top and what stays on the bottom. Pretty simple, that right? It's so easy. But I don't see people using that so much. Yeah. I think it's one of those little hacks that you guys can use quite easily and you'll find all these places. That's one of the key things that what we do when we're teaching is it's all about suitability and working with the head shape. Working with what, what's, what, what we're given. given. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I feel like that's pretty good. Luckily with this haircut too is I want a really nice, loose, open texture to kind of given that they've been playing around in the Shire, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But they climb <coughs> mountains and volcanoes and so I put in a little bit of like smoothing balm and then um, some blow dry lotion in there to kind of give it a little bit of weight as I'm cutting. So what as I'm like analyzing this too, I really like the length in the back. So I'm not even going to take any of that length off. Right. So what I see here, what we had beforehand, what looks like a um, a bob with layers. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to use that length right here over the ear to kind of start my layering. Knowing that I want like a square shape, I'm just going to be pulling this straight out and working with like a really big open stroke to, to give a lot of like separation and space. Cool. So. If you guys have questions, please feel free. Thank you so much for the badge. It's oh, really nice you. of you guys. So coming in here right over the ear, knowing that this is the weakest point because of the hairline that comes up and around, this is where I want to start because I know that that's where the length can be the weakest. If I start, you know, layering back here, you know, using that as my guide, then we mm -hmm. lose all of that length in the front. Yeah, that's key, guys. Starting on the highest point of the hairline. So analyzing where I'm at, right? Right there at the bottom is where that length is. So as that drops out, you know, I think I want to exaggerate this a little bit more. So I am going to actually end up taking off a little bit of length as we're going through now that I'm looking at this. So I'm going to start there. Also now I'm going to look at where that hair bends. And right where that hair bends is where I'm going to start kind of like creating that really big open texture. Just check my shape here. It looks pretty good, nice and broken. Using the wall behind me as like a, a guide to where I want to pull the hair to. Just pulling all of these sections just straight out of the head. So kind of obviously the same as how I cut hair when I'm using scissors. It's exactly the same principles. You're going to pull away from what you want to keep, aren't you? That's it. And just remembering my motion too, like having a little bit of body memory of how big I'm kind of like bringing that razor in and out. I don't want to, um, I want to create a lot of space. So I don't want to use tiny little strokes. I don't, I'm not like flicking this to cause like a lot of broken ends. I want to cause more space, more space, you know, dimension. So it's a slower movement, slower movement. And it's almost like a deep point cut. Right. To really break that up. I'm not trying to create a flat, like, line because it's gonna, that's going to weigh heavy. What I want is, like, something much more open. Silly hats only. Yes, it's exactly it. Use the box. Mm -hmm. That's someone's name, not you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, Silly hats only. I, I like that name. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. Use the room. We're generally in a box. So if you use those walls... It can help you with your over directions and even your elevations. So now imagining I'm just pulling this all straight out, like using that wall here. So kind of having that body memory, you have to contour your body a little bit differently coming in with the razor. Um, so just making sure that I'm not over directing too much into each section. 
if you over direct into each section, then it's just going to get longer, isn't it? It's not actually going to maintain that even balance that right. you want. Right, not going to be so flat. Yeah. It'll peek out that way. Just take a look. How's that looking? Yeah. Showdown wagon. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of keep working this side until every, until it doesn't reach, knowing that I want to go flat here and flat there. If I keep over directing, you know, or um, pulling into this flat line here, it's going to create a point in the back and then I can work off of the back. Cool. So I'm going to go side and then side. Especially working in that, you know, that side section and front section first before I go into the back because I know that's where the most dramatic change is going to happen. And if this was a person, that way they can see that most, you know, you can build trust going through the, the appointment. Oops. Okay, this section here. So you've got a class coming up. I've got a class coming up. January 24th, we have three spots left. It is a full hands-on um, razor cutting class. Here in San Diego. We will be um, going over like you know, a lot of basic um, use of the razor, but also um, really salon friendly haircuts that I would say I use on a regular basis. Um, cool. Everybody gets a doll head and, and uh, just a great way to, if you're not you, comfortable or used to using a razor, this is a really great class because we're using doll heads. So mm -hmm. that pressure of, um, you know, pleasing a client is, is kind of taken away and it's just a safe place for everyone to kind of learn and, and investigate. And if you are already a razor cutter, it's a great place to just advance your skills a little bit. Yeah, I, I think what it is, is it's razor cutting knowledge destroys fear away. So it's very much like myself, but instead of the scissors, it's using the razor. So very informative class going through the what, the why, the how, the when, and most importantly, the what if of razor cutting. And just like my classes, it's just packed full of haircuts. That's all we do all day. So I'm going to say like three, four possibly five possibly different five. shapes. Yeah. It all really depends on the people in the class, doesn't it? Yeah. On how the flow goes. Uh, but we believe in 100% uh, hands-on, you no know, sitting around watching other people cut hair. If you're interested in that, you can uh, sign up by following the link in uh, my bio and Kelly's bio. Yep, and the link tree. I'm excited for this class too. We've been talking about it so long and had to postpone it a little bit here and change things around. So it'll be um, be really fun just to, with a group of people and, and talk about, you know, how and when and why and like problems you have with the razor at the salon and all sorts of things, so. You got knowledge destroys fear, it just breeds confidence. Mm -hmm. Just a nice square layer here. So yeah, if you're just joining us guys, thank you very much. Um, it's nice to be back. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, Kelly's cutting some hair. Kelly does hair. You can get her out. And uh, she's working on a square layer right now. Keeping the length around, kind of just above collarbone, between collarbone and jawline area, mid neck. Kind of like a shorter, I don't want to say it's a shag because I always associate like the shags with more of a round Shape, layer. Yeah. yeah. So this is going to be a little bit more consistent throughout as opposed to everything like falling into the back here. Mm -hmm. But also just really using my razor to create like a lot of um, enhancing that texture, kind of releasing some of that texture. Nice big strokes, kind of like creating like peaks and valleys within the hair. I really liked when I was looking at that inspo picture, I really liked how broken everything was. And with curly hair or wavy hair like this, the more peaks and valleys you put in, the more it kind of clumps in on itself and, and creates all of these like, you know, mm. 
valleys and little flips and whatnot. I think you just get a lot more of the independence with the texture, don't you? Yeah. It gets to do its thing by, Let, by I, putting that space in there. And, and kind of knowing what shape I'm going for beforehand, so technically attacking it in a way that, like, I know it's what I'm going for, but then really using my, my tool here to kind of give, like, a broken shape. Right. So I'm doing the... the texturizing and the cutting kind of at the same time yeah you're relying also on your body positioning to pull that into that square shape so not really having to think so much about your over direction you know what i mean Absolutely. it's kind of naturally happening so you're a lot more confident with the layering that you're doing because you're protecting and i found like a, a, at least these i would say like these past like couple of weeks or so I think maybe because of the New Year's, I'm having a lot of people come in for the new hair, new me type of situation. There's been a lot of like big transformations that I've done. And I've been enjoying like having them come in with their hair just down and working with it in the state that it's at before going in and like tackling it with a, with a tool like wet. It's been really fun just to kind of freehand it a little bit more. Okay, we have a question. What's the difference between straight razor and guarded razor? That's from Silly Hats only again. Um, so the best analogy that I could come up with the difference between the guarded razor and the straight razor is kind of like um, a texturizing shear versus a, a straight razor or, or like a straight Regular scissor. pair of scissors. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the technique and the, the finish is, is the same, I would say, but... Um, you just, it's just not as sharp. You know, you have something else kind of like working in, against In the way. It. Exactly. Yeah. And really like, you know, do what works for you and what you're confident and comfortable with. That's kind of, um, I just wanna, you know, don't be afraid of the tool. So if you feel more confident and comfortable doing a razor haircut with the guarded blade, yeah, then I would say do that. It's like training wheels. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. Because obviously you know that I've been using the old feather razor, but I've, obviously it's guarded. So I'm still on the old training wheels situation. <laughs> but I like it like that. I like that. Um, knowing that I can't mess it up that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like how I just... I also one keep all my <laughs> phalanges on one hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no sushimi on the stage. Yeah, none of yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sushimi. There's, you know, I think the other part of the razor, like razor cutting, is that like a lot of at least clients or people will blame the tool for the bad haircut. Oh, always. Always, they will blame the tool. So having a conversation with somebody, you know, are you comfortable with having your hair cut with the razor? Is this something that you're open to? You know, talking about the benefits and why I'm choosing this tool over the scissors, um, I think is really important as well. Yeah, I, I feel like with the tools, it's just like scissors, you've got to, it's like, a, a, you know, buying a pair of shoes, you've got to try them on, you've got to feel what they're like. There's many different brands of razors. I know somebody who just mentioned Kisaki razors. Um, we tend to use uh, Playa razor, right? Yeah. Yeah, that Plier. comes from hair. You can get that at Hairbrained. Mm -hmm. And then um, I usually use a new blade per client. Um, and um, I have a subscription on Amazon and I get like two packs of blades every like three or four weeks or something like that. It's like the handle, like this part of the, the razor is, I think it's like a hundred bucks, maybe 120. Mm -hmm. And then like um, the pack of the two razors. packs of the blades is like 20 bucks. Okay, that's obviously we're here in the States. American dollars. American dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So what I'm looking at now is if I'm balanced. Sorry, I'm like right in your space. <laughs> it's okay. Come in. 
Um, I want to make sure that my, my haircut is balanced, that I'm seeing like even weight distribution on both sides, that like the flicks and some of the shorter pieces kind of start. Now with the razor, we can't be precise and... Uh, like the scissor? Right, exactly. But you can land in the same spot, Exactly, right? yeah, yeah. So balance versus symmetry, right? Yeah. So what I'm looking at is I'm feeling a little clunky, like it's a little heavy down in these bottom parts, and then I want to frame that frame that face out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna go in and do a little bit of texturizing only. I'm liking my shape, but I just wanna remove some of this density and make it really exaggerated. So pulling the hair out here and then looking at where that hair bend. Now I don't wanna go in and just kind of like take little bits out. I actually wanna create that separation where this hair kind of clunks together. So I'm gonna go in pretty close before the curve here and take out big sections. So now by doing that, I created some separation, but it doesn't leave it thin on the bottom. It leaves it a little bit more like separated. If I went in with like a finer stroke, just to, just these like tiny little ones, I think it, it doesn't have enough weight to hold anything and it just kind of makes it really flimsy and loose. It's much more feathered. It's like if you take the texturizing shears and ch 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 chop right. it at the ends, right. you lose the shape in that. So you're just coming around that perimeter area now. And just taking some weight out. Huge weight. Be like slide cutting, I guess. Oh, slide cutting? What would that be? <laughs> I think it's when you slide and you with cut your the fingers. Hair. And you cut the hair? Oh, right. oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> right in there. this side and I'm going right at that bend I mean I'm really these going pieces, in there aren't yeah, you yeah I'm really going for it but you see how that works so much better now guys and just being mindful of like the the bend right the curve of the hair um let me use a clip here Yes, Ian, I couldn't agree more. I'm, I've been really enjoying putting the two together, actually. The scissor foundation and then the work with the little razor afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really enjoying that. I guess that's probably an evolution thing of a Sassoon haircut, right? When we're no longer there. <laughs> See how that just breaks up on its own right there? So it's not fine and wispy on the ends we still have a really strong You've shape still got the bob in a sense haven't you? It, exactly yeah. but it's really just broken now so that there's more space for these to kind of like do its own little texture and flip and then the client can actually work with that can't they because they can get their hands in there and actually make their hair flick exactly and, yeah. and then it grows out really nice too because you have the stuff here so once that you know you get that like really big you know much more grow out gives clients more time and I think it stays texturized for longer as opposed to if you're just texturizing these bottom bits not really doing it's much. not really doing much as far as like a grow out it's probably a terrible business model of mine but I have people come in for these like mega haircuts and it's like a biannual thing it's like every six months but it lasts them a really long time that and coming and get their bangs trimmed pretty often mm -hmm. okay yeah all right So, I'm going to move to the top now. I think what I'm going to do... Mm -hmm. What would I do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we doing? I think I'm going to come up this way, as opposed to like giving myself a guide and moving forward. I want to kind of bring this up, so knowing that I'm going to be pulling straight up into the ceiling, so having that like in my head is where I'm bringing the guide to. And then using these lengths here on, the, on each side, as my target. So going flat across the top. I'm choosing to do that because I think if I took a guide from here and tried to cut it that way, I'm going to leave my ends, I'm going to leave this side too long. Yeah. 
right? Because that'll over direct. It'll be this will be easier to, to know where my over direct. <coughs> well, you're going to know where it's going to land right. if you work it this way. If you work it this way, you don't know where your length's going to land over. So, like, if you if you work from here now out you'll get a really cool disconnection. Right. Or if you connect to what you've got on the underneath, this will go really short through the top. Exactly. So the way you're doing it right now is probably the smarter choice, guys. So instead of coming more horizontal with the profile section across the top here, we're going to come more vertically. I know it looks horizontal to us right now, but that's technically vertical. This was a technique I learned, uh, I think it was called the Contemporary Classic when I was educating at Carleton. And they, they would do this and it was like, the first time I saw it, I was like, what do you mean? Like why, that seems so much more difficult, but the end effect is so different from, from just taking that one here and using that as the guide. I think you're, you know, especially cause now it's incorporating like right at the round of the head. Okay, so I have my guide. Let me bring you up a little bit, girlfriend. <laughs> so coming in, so I can see my guide, and I'm going to have to go past it for the razor so I can get in underneath, and then starting there. And then for this side, I'm going to have to stand on it. So I'm doing the same movement on both sides. Mm -hmm. I'm just going sections about as thick as my finger here. So working through the top. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you for the badge laboratory salon. Up here. So straight up to the ceiling. Checking to make sure I'm going straight up. It was funny because I was pointing out this hair while we were watching Lord of the Rings. And my family was like, why, why do you always, why can't you just watch the movie? Do you always have to like analyze? Yeah, like I don't, I mean, does everybody else do that? Yeah, I yeah. do. Always. Constantly. Constant. Always looking for the wig line too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm always looking for a good uh, rug. <laughs> I can spot one for miles away. Bad extensions. Oh my God, it's the worst. I like the Instagram, is this your client? That's a really good That's one. That's one of my favorites. I've not yet seen one of my clients, so doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I should upload my best friend's photos from beauty school because she just let me do whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to. I recently came across like actual photographs, like paper photographs, you know, from my time when I was like an assistant at Sassoon. Um, no, don't want to see those ever again. <laughs> it's like, you know, you had to document your work. So I, I used to have this Polaroid camera and I'd take a picture of everything, like all these different angles. And uh, yeah. My eye for suitability was definitely not there. Airport hair. Yes, yeah, silly hats, airport hair. And airport <laughs> shoes. Definitely airport shoes. Looking at what people are wearing on their feet. The um, flip-flops and sandals situation with no socks. It's a no-go. Were we talking about that last time? We were yeah. Explaining about uh, like how suitability is so important that, you know, Especially when I was a younger stylist, someone would come in like, I want something totally different. And so your first thought is always like, let's chop it all off. Yeah, let's do six disconnections. Yeah, and you chop it <laughs> off and you're like, that was a mistake. Totally. <laughs> oh, 
also when like clients bring in haircuts that are just so completely different from like them their hair texture yeah. their style like that they really like this person this person's haircut but they don't like the bangs and they don't like the length and so mm -hmm. you're really like having to chat with them about what what do you actually like about what, this? yeah what are you what are you trying to go for here it's the face it's their face the filter so everything through the top guys lifted straight up to the ceiling let's look at that direction right here just straight up we're working on a square layer so far mm -hmm. that's what's been happening um, so we worked through the sides and the underneath first disconnected the top off I'm really making sure that I'm going straight up here because it can be a little deceiving with the, now that the head is starting to round down this way, I want to be coming straight up like this and not pushing that way yeah. not and right. not over directing backwards. But looking at this, how all of these layers are If laying, you over direct backwards, it's full on emo. It's so emo. I mean, it's pretty much there now. Right? Maybe it's coming back. Oh. Gosh, no. I'm working on it. I don't mind the haircuts coming back, actually. Just the, the music. The music. Ugh. It's Sorry, great. that's my opinion. <laughs> I, could, I could do without, like, all of the makeup, but... The makeup. <laughs> but the haircuts I'm ready for. I'm Wait. having to relive it again. Obviously, my daughter, me, is 14. So... Well, I've already been through. We're going through again. It all comes back it around. It does. Huh? Like every band has like three words. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I am breathing. <laughs> I woke up. <laughs> I went for a walk. Mm, that's Oops, sorry. Cute. Okay, I'm liking how this is looking. I just knocked the TikTok phone. Oh no! It's still there though. Is everybody still looking? Everybody I don't know. I've not even paid any attention no, to I these haven't. guys. Sorry, TikTok. Hi, TikTok. TikTok's new for us. We're trying it. So if you want to follow us, you can. Kelly does hair, and Daniel Joseph Muldoon. Same names as Instagram. Okay, well, let me see here. Where am I? Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. So satisfying. Totally Kajigugu, Ian. Yeah, very new wave. I'm really glad that I have these opportunities to come in and do these haircuts because I can't imagine trying to tell a client that I want to give them Frodo Baggins hair. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Hmm. No, bro, it's cool, I swear. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Definitely. Got some Hobbit layers. Yeah, the Hobbit. The so if Hobbit you've just layers. joined us, guys, we've literally cut Hobbit layers. It's a shag for a Hobbit, basically. <laughs> so we've got square layering going off. Hey, Katie. Katie joined. Hi, Katie. We miss you. And yeah, so nice razored square layer and... We've just worked the top. So you've got a slight disconnection, haven't you? Which I feel is mm -hmm. awesome. Always works. She looks so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. She loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just had to, I wanted to re-dampen that so I could see what I'm going to do with the fringe. I want to open that face up. Analyzing here. I feel people don't do this enough, especially the people that use scissors. Take that moment just to, to just re wear, have a look, and see where I need to adjust or where I where we're going next. Totally. It's like, oh no, you can't do that. That's not allowed. You know what I mean? It's. It seems it's like definitely there's that allowed. pressure. Like keep moving, keep getting yeah, in there, oh, right? We don't do that when yeah. we wear with scissors. It's yeah. such a, like an old school mentality. I feel. Well, and this, you know, like constantly combing the hair back and forth, you're going to lose the direction, right? Like lose the vision and the shape. Mm -hmm. 
So just taking this minute to resaturate and like, you know, as I would do, let this kind of like clump together and, and kind of style it a little bit. Cause I know that I'm pretty much done cutting all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I only need to tackle the You're going to go with the edges, right? In yeah. the front. Yeah. So now looking at this, seeing where I want to keep that balance. Like, do I want to bring the fringe like over into here and take that away? Like even just taking your client, looking in the mirror and seeing what does that look like if I took that away? Yeah. Where would that be? Fro you know, it looks Frodo. It looks Frodo. You know, if I did like a, you know, a square, just like straight across fringe, something really short, like what would that look like? Is that something a little, hey. you know, is that the moment? But then also just kind of letting the new hair like react to like the big haircut or any cut at all, mm -hmm. right? And so then you can see like what you need to take away. This is the key thing. It has to look good without you involved. Right. And I feel that a lot of hair cutters, they're not haircuts, they're hairdressers, aren't they? Totally. They're totally always dressing the hair. You've got to let it do its thing and then go for it because you're not going to be there with that haircut once it leaves the salon. Yeah. So what I'm seeing right now is right where this like little bit of the layer is hitting, mm -hmm. all of this stuff that's falling down, that's where I want to start my fringe is right here because I feel like that's where the part... See it. Yeah, you could see where that's wanting to break away and how nicely all of this is hitting up into that point. Yeah, I mean, you could see, guys, where if you wish to curtain this, you could... It's doing it. And remember, it's doing it because it's layered, so all it would do is just come and start taking these pieces off, wouldn't you? Yeah, just... So your options are pretty much loads. I wouldn't say it's endless. Great cuts style themselves. That's a great one. I like that Totally. One. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Okay, so I'm going to just... Although I've done some great haircuts, but they just weren't suitable. <laughs> I thought they were brilliant. <laughs> so kind of going in with that same idea that I want to remove a lot of that weight but keep, you know, kind of the structure of the haircut. I'm just gonna kind of freehand this, I think is what I'm gonna do, because that's what I would do if this was a person with a body, right? And I would ask her to put it in this one, but take, That's what I love about the razor too, is the ability to come in and just do that. Just freehand that out. Yeah, boom. Done. And see what's like falling. Yeah. I mean, you can use the scissors, but it just takes a bit longer to get there. You know, this freehand work yeah. isn't very technical, but you know, it's that, that creative side, right? That people, you know, creative cutting. I think it's just, it's kind of just, taking that moment and I don't want it to be as structured you know I don't want to go in and put like a really structured curtain fringe no yes how that just falls so nice and then looking at what's falling on her eyes and what's falling like outside because I don't want to just keep going always stop right before you think you finish right wasn't that Coco Chanel like take one thing off before you leave the house <laughs> Funny. That's great. What did you take off today? Socks. <laughs> yeah. Got the old crocodiles on. I did have to find my pink hat because my kids hid it from me. Should we do this correction only with a razor? No, you can do, like I was saying before, you could use scissors. You could use whatever you, you want. I've seen like a chisel being used once before. That's really cool. I think that's it. Yeah, I think you've achieved what you said you were going to do. It's yeah. shorter, but I like it much better this way. It's cute. It's cute. I think it's really like, I, I like just the difference of the layering. I think it does give a, as opposed to going from the fringe back and working just kind of that traditional shag that we've been seeing. Yeah, I was wondering whether layering. you were going to do that. I didn't, I wanted to do something a little different. So I think this gives it more like on the profile, it's much heavier this way. 
And I think it's a, just like a little bit of a different version of kind of like what's trending. Totally. But I also think something like this would work really well for somebody who's got super dense hair yeah. as opposed to giving them the like the shag which could lean a little more mullety as it grows out something like this because it is a square layer and has more consistency so in you've the not left all this weight back here have you you've right. got a nice even flow all the way through yeah 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 guys so i hope you enjoyed that if you didn't see it you will be able to see it as always we'll put them up on my page uh, you can access all the old um tutorials from last year as well in there and yeah thanks for joining us happy new year thank you kelly yeah thanks guys happy mega new year. cool